Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, today I just want to uh, go ahead and compare and contrast uh, CPAP versus BiPAP. Um, so here I have BiPAP and I have CPAP. Um, I also have this bi-level here. Uh, because BiPAP is a, a trademark name, uh, it's probably more appropriate to call it bi-level um, ventilation. Now, I want to be very, very careful, and I want to emphasize that I'm not talking about the bi-level, the invasive bi-level ventilation that would occur on a ventilator. And as some may know, this is a, um, a what we call a specialty mode of ventilation, like APRV, airway pressure release ventilation, high-frequency jet, high-frequency oscillatory ventilation. It's one of those more specialized modes of ventilation um, for uh, people that have very non-compliant lungs, such as um, ARDS patients. Um, I'm not talking about that kind of bi-level. I'm talking about bi-level non-invasive um, positive airway pressure ventilation. Um, in, in just the, if it's non-invasive, they're wearing a mask, they're not intubated, we're doing bi-level ventilation. is going to be very different uh, than the bi-level mode of ventilation on a ventilator. So I just want to make sure that there are no, there's no confusion over that distinction. So let's go ahead and just compare and contrast these guys, and I'll start at CPAP. So with CPAP, like I said, CPAP is analogous to PEEP. So there is one pressure. You only set one pressure. And that's called CPAP. One pressure, that's it. So uh, maybe I have my ventilator or, or uh, my, my machine, whatever I'm interfacing with, um, I may set it at plus 10 centimeters of water of pressure and that's my CPAP that's it I get one pressure um, it may or may not uh, I may or may not have a breath setting uh, a lot of them will you can set how what how many breaths per minute sometimes they're timed sometimes it's purely spontaneous generally with CPAP you're looking at a, a purely spontaneous you just get one pressure you get some flow and that's all there is to CPAP um, that's it. So it's just like PEEP, positive index inexpiratory pressure. Same thing. It increases the functional residual capacity, and that, of course, allows us to recruit alveoli. That increases oxygenation, and it also decreases uh, work of breathing. Um, you can also have some alveolar splinting occurring, and that can help um, with pulmonary edema, I'd also say that um, the increase in um, intrathoracic pressure, ITP, um, can decrease a preload, um, which can decrease um, the cardiac workload, because the heart doesn't have to work as hard, and that is uh, one of the proposed mechanisms behind how CPAP can be effective in uh, congestive heart failure, is by uh, decreasing preload and um, the heart doesn't have to work as hard. Now we need to be very careful because if I decrease preload too much, then I ultimately end up severely uh, retarding cardiac output, and that can lead to problems of hypoperfusion. So we need to be you know, pretty careful when we do this, as, as with a lot of things in medicine. Okay, BiPAP, on the other hand, is very different because I set two pressures. I set two pressures. I set what's called an IPAP, and that's inspiratory positive airway pressure. Okay, so IPAP and I said an EPAP. And that's expiratory positive airway pressure. So I have a pressure high and a pressure low. So you may see something like this, 10 over 5. What that means is I've set 10 of IPAP, inspiratory positive airway pressure, and I've set 5 of EPAP. So I have, so when I inhale, when I'm inhaling my inspiratory phase, I'm, I'm getting a high pressure, 10. And then as I'm exhaling, I'm exhaling against a lower pressure. So with BiPAP or bi-level, I have a pressure high and a pressure low, an IPAP and an EPAP. The difference between my IPAP and my EPAP, the difference, so 10 subtract 5 gives me 5, is known as the pressure support. Now this is very important because in BiPAP um, I can affect ventilation. How well somebody ventilates, how well somebody clears carbon dioxide ultimately. And the difference between IPAP and EPAP is a pressure support if that pressure support increases. So let's say I increase this to 12 over 5. 
Okay, what's 12 subtract 5? Well, that's just 7, right? My pressure support has increased. Therefore, because that difference is increased, that means that my lungs can expand that much more and collapse that much more, okay? They have more room for things to work, and that ultimately results in increased ventilation. Increased ventilation. So if I need somebody to ventilate more effectively, I can change the difference between my IPAP and my EPAP, or what's known as pressure support in this case, and I can assist with ventilation. Likewise, if there isn't much of a difference, let's say I have 8 over 6, that gives me a pressure support of 3, you can see that if there isn't a whole lot of difference, that can actually lead to decreased ventilation. So, as the difference increases, my ventilation increases, decreases ventilation increases. Now, let's be very careful here. The difference, the pressure support is ventilation. Where is my oxygenation occurring here? Well, my oxygenation is occurring here, right? Because EPAP is physiologically about the same thing as PEEP or CPAP. So we need to be very careful, and, and we need to assess our patient, and we need to, re we need to, to recognize, well, what am I treating if I'm using a bi-level non-invasive mode of ventilation? What am I treating? Am I treating an oxygenation problem or ventilation problem? If it's a ventilation problem, which classically um, BiPAP is for ventilation, and I should just throw that up here, for ventilation, that's car removal of carbon dioxide, and classically CPAP is for oxygenation. So um, if I'm using BiPAP, I need to be very careful about how I use it, and I need to recognize, am I using BiPAP to fix an oxygenation problem or a ventilation problem? Because ventilation problem is going to be here, oxygenation problem is going to be down here, and I can inadvertently run into issues where I'm increasing my EPAP and I don't increase my IPAP, and um, I'm trying to fix an oxygenation problem, but I inadvertently cause... A ventilation problem and I can you know let's say I'm fixing a ventilation problem and I decrease the EPAP to, to give my, me more pressure support and then I inadvertently end up creating an oxygenation problem so there's a very fine balance and we need to be very careful about how we use um, BiPAP now CPAP is just one pressure um, uh, before I head out uh, and, and head, uh, in the lecture or the discussion I'd ask well which one's better which one works better and if you look at the evidence, the evidence suggests that um, BiPAP is a little faster. It's faster. Um, you see more rapid improvement. Um, that doesn't necessarily seem to suggest that uh, people get out of the hospital and go home and live a happy life faster with BiPAP. But there is, there does seem to be a correlation with um, initial improvement, um, a faster initial improvement with BiPAP. Um, versus CPAP. However, um, I believe in a, a couple of studies they found that there are, there's a much higher incidence of um, myocardial infarction or heart attack occurring in the BiPAP patients. Now again, correlation does not necessarily mean causation, but there is some correlation between um, poor, poor outcomes um, when looking at um, uh, myocardial infarction uh, versus CPAP. What the evidence definitively shows, or I shouldn't say definitively because there's no definitive in, in, in anything, but what the evidence highly suggests is that both CPAP and BiPAP are effective in, in certain patient populations. Um, we know they're effective, we can use them, um, so when, when deciding what to use, often it's simply going to be uh, down to provider experience, provider comfort level, and ultimately a, a judgment call at this time. Okay guys, hopefully you found that helpful. Take care.